got going on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Somebody hating on me, but you're not going to. Okay. We can't be stopped. <laughs> I'm not going to let you have it. Now she's going to get going to answer this question because somebody need to hear this yes yes okay now what what did you hear last my love so you were you were just saying how like how definitely it's a, it's a brave task to kind of share that and I think you're getting into like maybe how I found the, the courage or something of that nature yeah right oh yeah and, and so because even when you express yourself and you said I'm gonna give you a little you know singing I'm gonna give you a little spiritual I'm giving you all of these things and 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 in the industry and and music sometimes they kind of want you to give what they want you to give well we need to okay you know how to play instrument or you know how to sing and rap okay just give that that's that you know what I'm saying but if you're a painter or actor or you know, people try to tend to sway you in a way that they want to sway you in. And even for me, I've went through that. I've fought that battle for probably over 15 years plus almost of being in the industry of people trying to present what they wanted me to be to everyone. And I'm just like, it's so much to me. And, you know, one day I got up and I was like, F it. I'm going to do me. Cause I love me and there are layers to me and either you F with it or you don't, you know? And so my question is more so like, how did you, or what came in your mind? Like, you know what? I'm going to give my layers and I'm going to be brave enough to do this with all of the people around me. That's going to not understand that probably won't be equally yoked with my spirit or and or you, you might overstand over or just some of the stuff you're saying right now some people just probably listening to this like huh but there's somebody in there that's like oh god I've been asking for her like or I've been asking for that person to speak up and all of that so I feel like somebody's listening and I want them to know like how did you be you know how did you become brave? Yeah. Thank you for that question. Mm. Um, yeah, so let me definitely just start by saying it has been a journey. This is not some, even how I'm sitting here with y'all right now, this is work. <laughs> this is a lot of work that took into even being able to sit here in this conversation with y'all. Um, fear has strangled me for a long time. I'm talking about can't breathe. Um, and, and like you were saying about how like people try to, I, I am, I know I'm gifted. I have, you know, i got a few gifts in my belt, but especially when you're younger and not aware of who you are, yes, people see that and they're like, oh, let me, oh, we gonna put her right here. We got, and I, oh God, I went through that. I done lead so many people's bands and try to do it's like they see you and I call it like romanticizing not necessarily in an intimate sense but they try to romanticize they, they see you and they get a vision of like what your energy could be for them mm -hmm. and then they try to put you mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. and I done went through that Whew. so this entire my entire business my entire being is just an act of rebellion to that I love because it because yeah, yes I was like I can't mm -hmm. live that way I have so much in me to offer and it needs to be offered in the pristine sacred way that feels authentic to me and even like you you were just saying like how I know in this event like I'm gonna half the time I don't even know completely what's about to happen that's how authentic I allow myself to flow you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If I'm about to sing, I'm about to sing. If I'm about to play this flute, I'm about to play this flute. If I'm about to just talk, because my spirit is telling me people need to be encouraged right now, that's what's going to happen. And I, when you ask me, how did I become brave? How did I find that courage? Really? That has just been staring at that fear 
in its eyes every single day and saying, okay, let's go. That's it. Like I, I wish I can even say there's some magic culture. Nope. It has been a persistent, resilient breakthrough. That's what it's been. You know, you have to really decide what you are living for. You know, that's how I totally feel. Are you living? What are you living for? What are your values? And at the end of the day, I recognize, wow, you know what? Every great that I've studied then had to walk that lonely path for a little minute. Every single one of them. If you're a visionary, if you're somebody with insight, then of course the ones around you are not, they're not going to grasp at first. They're just not. So you must be willing. You have to be willing. You got to be devoted. They say walk by faith, not by sight. All of these things, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I decided very consciously that I was going to devote myself no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like. I mean, I came here and popped up to like Atlanta. I don't, I mean, I know a few people here in Atlanta, but this isn't my stumping ground. So on top of that, I'm being super brave by (laughs) starting something completely in a foreign space, technically, you know, but I have such a deep, like this faith, like runs through my entire system. I live off of it daily and and I chose that so I guess I just say to people like you have to that's why I do my sessions that's why I do my healing sessions because I is my mission and my purpose to help people reclaim their energy reclaim it take it back take it back to you so that you can see what is for you you know no matter what your mama say your daddy say your friend your cousin your foe doesn't matter what is it for you you know and then how can you walk that walk and that's all that's what I'm doing that this everything I'm doing and I try to be as transparent as possible I try to let you know I'm not putting on no show I have to get up in the morning I got to put my feet in the ground and I got to say okay negative thoughts be gone be good yeah like okay doubt I hear ya (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I know what I'm here for and ain't nothing going to stop me. So I, I just really, over time, I just continue to, I just continue to develop a sense of um, resilience. It's a resilience. I kept feeding the resilience. I kept, feed, I decided what, what deserves my energy. Once you reclaim your energy, then you can decide, you can start deciding what you're depositing it into. Okay. See, before that, you don't mm-hmm. know. You don't know that you actually still given all this and given all that. You don't know because you're not aware. So you got to take it back, reclaim, and then move forward. And it's all about what you feed. You can decide to keep feeding the fears. Mm-hmm. And guess what? That's what's going to keep growing. Girl. Or you can consciously <laughs> say, you know what? Uh-uh, I'm about to feed my faith. This is the vision I got. I'm going to feed that. The only thing I'm depositing is my energy into that and just like anything on this planet earth there are these trees that we see outside and everything like that they are under that ground long before they come out hmm. you they could you don't know you don't know what's growing under there mm. so that's why having a deep trust is so important and really that goes back to a trust in self and you may even call it no matter how you practice spirituality but a trust in god or a trust in a higher power a trust in something way bigger than just what we can tangibly yeah that's dope i, I know i know what you we gonna because I, I know we gotta bump along i know what you we gonna have to do this like the matrix it's gonna have to be some sequels to this you're gonna have to come I back know. Two, three, four, four. i yes. love it yeah. 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 let's go mm-hmm. definitely yes. thank you for answering my question you you give me life and also i mm-hmm. personally chatted you so check your chatty okay chat, oh. chat. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is Sean Garvey here? Sean yes. is on mute and he looks cute on mute. <laughs> ah, all right, Sean. Sean, do you really want Moody taking over the lead? Look, uh, Sean is like this, Moody. I got it. Okay. Like, How did I get on mute? I don't know. <laughs> you can't mute Sean I- Garvey. How you mute yourself from your your show? Bro? <laughs> he was hey, listen. 
Listen, man, technology. I said I said a few minutes ago the internet has been acting wacky over the past few days, but we'll get into that later. But what I was going to say, Wola, was that the universe made you step out of that meeting early. Because mm-hmm. I know you told me offline that it, it was prolonged to come on the morning show and give us this amazing information and affirmations and your insight on things. Because I'm going to tell you something with this mental health, you, you, and, and I told you offline that I do a mental health show. Uh, mm-hmm. With this mental health thing, it is still real out here. And mm-hmm. for me being a mental health advocate who has been through mental health issues, I need a spiritual healer. I, I need one in my life. So we'll, we'll talk offline and build because I know we talk. Uh, are you still there? I'm here. Now y'all talking about I'm mute. Now y'all talking about I'm muted. <laughs> she was listening to you. Yeah. I'm now she was just. <laughs> I just saw. I just saw a still face of her and a smile. That was it. But oh. now, now we now we got you back on. But no, I do need a spiritual healer. Yeah, but, let's work for sure. You yeah. got my number. Let's us you know set something up. This is what I'm here for. I'm driven by this. I've dedicated and devoted my life. I don't do nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on now. You do something else now. I mean, you sing. Yeah, I saw your video on Instagram. Well, it's all you sing, encompassed. You do a little bit. It's all he is a yeah. Hippie. It's, it's all, all in one. It. Yeah, that's oh, okay. that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, what? I didn't think about that. I, I like that. I like that because you you're you you letting me know that you're not the type of person to put all eggs in one basket. You you want to be able to infuse everything that you're good at, everything that you're talented at and make it into one that makes up the the essence of who you are as a person so i like that i like that Mm -hmm. indeed (laughs) uh body flow atl it is going down the 29th if i don't make the 29th event i'm definitely going to make the 26th event but i'm going to see how my schedule looks this weekend and it's going down at the private ranch house now from my understanding um location is set to be released to registered attendees. Absolutely. I mean, I, me that that's info. just, I will. And I, and I saw your chat, so I'm definitely going to, um, I'll shoot you a text and I'll get you all the information in there. Um, I, it's not like I'm trying to like hide it, but you know, I do want people to understand <laughs> that it is a, you know, it's a private, it's a, it's an exclusive. Let's use that. You know what I'm saying? So um, if you are interested, of course, I'll send the address out, but just if you actually interested <laughs> okay yeah. all right now i mean hey this this is going to be a very very uh great experience at the private ranch house uh mm-hmm. and if people want to learn more information about the event and just other things that you've got going on how can they follow you and what website do they need to contact you at absolutely so um my instagram personally um where you'll see me shining my personality all that good stuff is wola and the wind so w-o-l-a and the wind um the business instagram you can also follow that of course which is soma s-o-m-a-d-e-e-p-i-n-c soma deep inc and then the website itself is somadeep.com. Um, and all of those things, you'll get everything. Of course, the website, you can fully register for the event. Um, so just so people know, if you just want to come through for the vibes, that's just a $5 entry. Come enjoy the ranch house if you want the full experience, which includes the ceremony, being fed, my personal essence, all of that good stuff. That's 22. So yeah, again, Instagram, Wola in the Wind. Also, Soma Deep Inc. And then the website, somadeep.com. Love it. Hey, when I, when I come through, I may come through with the poetry. Uh, you, you never know. Or I just, yeah, or I just the want to ceremony is, that's mm-hmm. the point. The ceremony, and when people register, you'll get the little follow-up email, which is, this yeah. is a, it's a creative release ceremony. So I, I have a, yes. a, a cipher prepared. So basically, <laughs> be ready, okay? You're going to get, you have to. <laughs> So hey, they don't call it they don't call it body flow for nothing. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, indeed, indeed, man. (laughs) But we really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Wola. Very beautiful name, very beautiful spirit. 
coming on the morning show. Um, we're definitely going to have the ones to have you come back on the morning show. And uh, shout out to all my Instagram because I wish you all could see this young lady and, and her spiritual healing. Uh, but once we have you back on the morning show, we will be broadcasting live again on the Instagram page. OK, so Perfect. we definitely want to have you back and we will build offline, of course. For sure. For sure. Thank all of you so much. I appreciated this. This was inspiring. Got me fired up. I'm ready to go hop back into the work, you know. So, yeah. OK, and you kept your thank you. you, see you oh, yeah. You gave this to me, you. you know, exclusively. Absolutely. Yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm going to hop back mm -hmm. in my meeting. I know they wait. You know what I mean? Right. Thank y'all so right. much. Love, love, love. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right thank you thank you so much all right ladies okay. and gentlemen that was mm -hmm. the one and only Wola is going down body flow atl summer series kicking off the 29th of may at private ranch house and uh just go to somadeep.com for more information all right it's the beat break morning show beat break podcast um like i said folks we're doing a little bit of experimenting um, so guests are welcome. Just make sure you want mute. If you have questions or comments for our guests, we're just trying something out for the first time, you know, in radio, in all forms of media, you want to see what works, what doesn't work, uh, just to improve and enhance what we're doing with the morning show. Uh, of course, yours truly, the architect, Sean Garvey, Star Kells, and Mr. Moody. Shout out to uh, the one and only DJ Rollum, who is still on vacay for his uh, post wedding Young Sean, ceremony. congratulations, boy, graduate. Congratulations, nephew. Absolutely. Congratulations. Big congrats. Big congrats to Young Sean, yeah. uh, former producer of the Jeffers Moody Show. Yeah. He, has, he has now graduated and moving on up in the world. I've seen the graduation pics. I've seen the graduation pics online, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Proud of that kid, man. Yeah, man. I'm going to give him a call. I'm going to give mm -hmm. him a call tomorrow yeah. and give him my uh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Also, speaking of congratulations, congratulations to a uh, good friend and a colleague of mine. We go back to the WRFG 89.3 FM days, uh, DJ Yogi. His real name is actually Peter Dennis, <laughs> but he goes by DJ Yogi. Uh, he's one of the production team behind the now Emmy nominated TV series on HBO Max called The Inside Story. Okay. All right. um, over All there right. at All Turner, right. over there at Turner Sports, and they have been nominated for an Emmy. For an Emmy for Best Documented Documentary Series, by the way. It's on HBO Max. Uh, the Inside Story, of course, the Inside Story chronicles the life and times of the popular TNT show, um, the sports talk show with Shaquille O'Neal, uh, Charles Barkley, and those two other guys. I don't know their names. See, I don't follow oh, sports Lord, Kenny, like Kenny that. Smith, Kenny Smith and Ernie. Kenny and Ernie. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See, I'm I'm not a sports guy. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But I have seen some clips and, and some of their content in the past. So I, I only know Shaquille and I only know Charles. Yo, Shaq, what up, big little bro? Yo, Kenny Smith, what up, Queen? Stand up, man. What up, y'all? <laughs> y'all need to come, y'all need to come on the show. I'm starting to have an issue with this. When I come back, I need more respect. Put some respect on my name. Well, then you know, they, you know, you know, they're taller than you, Mr. Moody. Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> they better do something, is all I'm they saying. Snapping. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yo, that's yeah, great. Man. I feel like, yo, don't you guys feel like working out? I go, go yeah, it, I, it, it is I, summertime, I, so I feel like I feel like doing something. Like, I want to, I want to do, I want to just do something positive right now. You felt that aura from Rola. That's what it was. You felt that aura. Yo, you bro, felt that, that the energy from Rola. You, feel, you feel good. It's a good feel. It is. Yeah. It is. That's that's why you got to be around people like that, man. That, and that's one of the reasons why. That's one of the reasons why I went to the Malcolm X Day Festival at Westin Park. You heard me talk a little bit about it on the Mental Space on WAOK this past Monday. Great event. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel, in my personal opinion, that the event can sometimes be overlooked. Um, because it's an event that goes on in Atlanta 
Uh, It's been going on for a while now, for a long time, and they always draw a very big crowd of people to the event. Uh, Each year is an annual event, three-day event. Uh, Some of the performers, the the biggest performer that I saw on stage was Sorok. Was it Sorok or Star? Um, No, it was Sorok. So rock, so rock, the hip hop artist, yeah, hip hop artist, of course from Atlanta. Um, he performed <laughs> on stage. Some of the video is on my uh, IG page at Sean Garvey ATL. But they had a lot of great stuff happening. You know, different vendors. Um, they also had different artists. You you'll see some of the highlights on my Instagram page at Sean Garvey ATL. Great food and just a great vibe out there. Great vibe, positivity, no chaos, no fighting, no beefing, no argument. You can't you can't see that happening at a Malcolm X Day Festival event. It, it was like very peaceful. Yeah. Very peaceful, yeah. man. Big shot stuff. What that, is going very, on? Uh, that, that is beautiful to hear, man, all the time. <laughs> Peace on Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King Boulevard would be perfect. That's great. Way to go. Yeah. Yeah, man. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so in the next hour, we're probably going to switch back over to IG at Beat Break Radio because uh, we're testing something out here. So for the first hour of the morning show, um, we what we do just to give you some inside things on what we do here behind the scenes at the Beat Break Morning Show, we take the video footage and take it to our uh, affiliate platforms, Thinking Out Loud Network, and also on the Flow Television Network, since we're on Roku TV. Got a, got a stunt on that real quick. Flow TV Network on your Roku television set. No we cap. take some of the footage. No cap. No cap at all. Uh, mm-hmm. We take some of the video footage and we take it over there for them, for our viewers to see what we look like and some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But what I've been having trouble, ladies and gentlemen, is sending the Instagram videos over to the production team department <laughs> for them to edit, do what they got to do, and distribute to the platforms that are in affiliation with us. So that's why we hopping back and forth on Zoom, because with Zoom, it's much easier to edit and to send to the production team to do whatever they got to do in post production than it is on Instagram. I know that's that's a little bit of engineering talk. It, it's putting Mr. Moody to sleep just by me talking about that. By the way, or, unless he's froze up. No, no, I'm, not, no, I'm, no, not no I'm not froze up. Honest. I'm like, I'm like. Yeah. Moody <laughs> fell asleep. Moody was in the mood to sleep. <laughs> hey, look, I'm sitting there like, so what does this have to do with me talking to a microphone? Um, she was like, <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, I'm just giving some technical talk. That was my technical talk for the morning show. Right now. I, 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 won't do, I won't do that again, ladies and gentlemen. That went over your head. Over your head. All right, but I'm just saying. Sean. Sean was just letting everybody know what was up, all of the audience and stuff like that. Like, you know, what yeah. we do. Some people want to know that stuff. Yeah, because we got people I'm hitting the, us. I'm we the, got people. We got people hitting us up at IG saying we want to see you live on IG. We want to see you live on our, our IG. I'm the only one that's on IG. Everybody else, Mr. Moody, uh, Star Kills is not on IG. I am on IG solo, Dolo. I tried, but it wasn't working. It kept echoing and stuff. I wasn't looking cute. The phone kept. I, I couldn't do it. I did tell those people to come to Zoom. We even have our uh, guest audience right now sitting there just chilling, looking like chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Hey, chocolate attracts chocolate. How about that? Yeah. 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 (laughs) I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But uh, it is what it is. But like I said, uh, first hour, we're going to be doing all of our video footage via Zoom. And then the next hour of the program, we're going to switch over to IG. So that way we can interact with the audience. That way uh, we know some people are comfortable with watching all three of us and our special guests on IG. So, you know, like I said, we, we try to kind of figure it out as we go along what works and what doesn't work. It's, mm-hmm. it's technology, it's, it's media. Mm-hmm. You know, we're trying, to get, we're trying to get our numbers up more. Also, before we go to our, our second guest, big shout out to the person 
uh, Shannon Dot Willer or Will Murr, if I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, uh, for picking up the T-shirt that I'm wearing that I got from another colleague of mine from WRFG 89.3 FM back in the day. Uh, big shout out to Tariq from Peas in a Pod, Return of the Boom Bap for giving me this shirt that I am wearing. Okay. Notorious B.I.G. Biggie. All right, Brooklyn, uh, what up? Yeah, well, man. Up to the street for giving me this nice shirt, you know I'm wearing. Yeah, oh yeah, hey, hey, yeah. That big shout out to Star Kells for rocking that. By the way, me, it's it's already hot girl summer already. Well, you know what's hot girl all see year you. around, all season around, sweetheart. Don't worry about it. Don't mm. worry about it, sweetheart. All year round, you're gonna get chocolate drop. Now, come on, now. yo. I can't, I can't, I can't see Star. What, what kind of t-shirt she got on? I saw yours. I saw the boom bag. Booty, you're late, baby. That that ship not sail, baby. You should, you gotta keep up, boo boo. Oh, I missed it already. You get, you missed it. It, it comes fast and it go fast, baby. That's it. You gotta stay Yo, on that I bet, track. I bet, you, I bet you was looking all chocolatey. Mmm. I was looking like <laughs> Eminem. Mmm. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, Eminem. You mean the 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 Caucasian rapper? He was looking like Eminem, or are you talking oh. about Eminem the Candy? Eminem, because you got. Yeah, I was the chocolate okay. on the outside, a uh, chocolate on the inside, orange on the outside. I'm know? just saying you got to mm. clarify because it is the internet now. You got to clarify mm. these days. Look, th these I'm people not looking like no damn Eminem, Eminem the 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 white rapper. <laughs> <laughs> they know damn well. Can we can we, keep, can we keep saying the white rapper in 2022? We yeah, can't why keep not? Saying, can't white, black sure. people, the black person, the black lady. I can say the white. Hey, lady. listen, he, he's he. Hey, I'm just saying, Eminem, he he some he can be blacker than some of these other black folks Eminem, out there. But then, but then, but those Eminem. those people, those people are my critics, though. Those be my critics. Well, that's a that's a white man. Mm -hmm. He's a hood white man. He got urban in him. He just hood. He white hood. White yeah, yeah, yeah. Hood that, and that, that's a different show, but yeah, M, M can rep harder than M can rep harder than, than than a lot of his peers. But um, I'm just mad that I missed the Eminem because Star be looking all chocolatey. She be looking all fine, you know what I'm saying? From co-host to co-host, I ain't trying to say not crazy stuff. I ain't trying to act like that. I'm just saying she be looking all chocolate and fine and stuff like that. And she you had on the Eminem show. Me I look like? Huh? This older man mm. told me I look like. Uh. Was it Foxy Brown off a movie or something brown? Uh, what Foxy? Foxy Brown, the actress? I mean, the yeah. Pam Greer or the rapper? It was a no. They said off a movie, an actress or something like that. It, from that's back Pam Greer. That's, that's Pam Greer. Now, how old was this older man? Oh, he was old. Eighty years what? old, probably. Like he was Morgan like Freeman the old. Late sixties, <laughs> early seventies, maybe. Okay. Yeah. okay. Hey, hey there, sugar. <laughs> he was like, you looking at me. Look kind of chocolate there. <laughs> he said, like. you know who you look like? I was like, oh, shh. I said, yes, sir, what, 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 oh, what's going on, sir? Do you even want to answer that question? <laughs> he said, baby, you look like this lady off a of TV from a long time ago. You, a fox, he said, a foxy lady. I was something like that. And I said, oh. Oh, so he said foxy lucky. lady. So he didn't say foxy brown. He said a foxy lady. He said foxy lady. Then he started telling me about some movie where the lady called Brown a fox or something. He was saying I, I was. Yeah, just, that, that's. I that's, didn't want to go too far, so I was just like. No at least he didn't. Fox. At least he didn't say. At least he didn't say Bobby Brown. So. Well, yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> that that is that is Pam Grant, and it's a good thing that you hold your own and you got integrity because you know you could have got you a free. Uh, uh, electric car off his SSI and not worry about eighteen dollars a gallon in gas because old guys buy electric cars for the young ladies. I wish that's I what I'm gonna do as soon as I turn I probably would have not. I wouldn't have walked away now. <laughs> Got me a free electric car. You should have told me about this earlier, Moody. Say so when that Tesla. When next time, call me, girl. I'd be like, I am because you know they said. Now they said when, when the man get after a certain you know, age, it don't work mm -hmm. no more. So it's not like I would have to worry about no other, no activities doing There you go. It there don't go. work. You better get that Tesla. Dang, where he at? <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let's move on. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We are, we up against the station ID. We got to take this quick station ID right here on the Be Break Morning Show. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Welcome back to the Be Break Morning Show, the Be Break Podcast. Sean Garvey, Star Kills. Uh, shout out to DJ Rollum on his vacay pre honeymoon. Uh, or post post honeymoon or post marital post wedding whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um yeah mr moody mr moody sitting again for dj rollo mm -hmm. until he gets back we got another special guest in the building ladies and gentlemen we got a filmmaker slash videographer on the beat break morning show this morning and he is the founder of city vanguard an arts organization that helps independent filmmakers create community-based documentaries for educational and cultural institutions all the way from the shy, shy town, Chicago. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for David Weathersby. Hey. Hey. Welcome to the morning show. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for waiting very patiently, uh, David. We we were just trying to get a lot of healing going on the morning show. I know, my pleasure. I was, I was I was listening in. <laughs> Did you feel it? Did you feel the energy? Yeah, I was I was I was trying to take it in myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still taking it in. Still taking it in. Uh, okay, so are you originally from the shot? Because it was brought to my attention that you based out of shy, but are you originally from the shot? No, no, actually, I've been here over 20 years, so it's it's in my blood now, but I was really from the West Coast, and that actually kind of sparked what I'm doing now because I saw so many differences in Chicago culture and everything that I just felt like I needed to document this, things that were just mm -hmm. kind of like normal life that I thought were just absolutely fascinating, but yeah, it's been well over, we're heading towards, you know, 25 years now, so yeah, I've, um, I'm 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 well rooted and well ingrained in <laughs> Chicago land culture right. and everything. Let, okay. let me tell you, let me tell you, David. I love Chicago, regardless of what too. people say, what people think, and how the media presents Chicago. I mean, we are aware of the uh, the state that some places in Chicago are, and and at times it's, it's very unfortunate. But I just love the artistry. I love the artistry from Chicago. I mean, you know, I think of Chicago. I, I watched The Shy on Showtime. Um, big ups to Lena for just doing such a great job with that show. Uh, from an art standpoint, I love shows like The Shy. I love the music. I love uh, the culture there. What, what do you think, in your honest opinion, David, what do you think it comes from, the, the artistry and the amazing talent coming out of Shy? What do you think it comes from? It's history, it's culture, it's community. Uh, Chicago is it's very unique. It is a large city, but it operates in a very communal. People feel like it, it feels like small town because people know each other. They communicate mm. with each other. It's like when I'm in different neighborhoods, uh, like, like Hyde Park, I run into somebody I know almost every single time I'm in Hyde Park, you know? It's like, there's a lot of people in Chicago, but I run into people I know, like every time there's a, there's a community, there's a history, there's a, um, a, a uniqueness. It's, it's, it's rooted in um, not just arts, but struggle where a lot of people, there's a lot of civil rights accomplishments that, that aren't known nationally that happened here. A lot of innovations that were here. A lot of things that people associate with other places started right in Chicago you know, from everything from, you know, the Globetrotters to Soul Train. And, mm, and so I think that's, that's something that, that is just so unique about Chicago and so beautiful about Chicago. And that's why if I, I it, 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 it saddens me when people think of the sadness, because I think people don't really know Chicago. If you, if you know, it's, it's, it's no one ever pretends like there, there's not problems, but there is just as much or more, there's more beauty in the city than there is negativity. But, you know, mm. because people want to scapegoat, it usually doesn't get broadcasted nationally. That's so true. Right. right. Yeah. That's so yeah. true. I, I, I literally love Chicago. I've been there probably more times than I can count. 
the first time I went, I could not believe how beautiful it was. Even the people are more like Southerners. People were yeah. nice speaking, food was good. It, it gave me real Southern vibes with beautiful lake water and boats. And I'm just like, hold up. I'm sleeping on Chi-Town. Like, it yeah. was a different experience for me all together. And it's not what they say it is. That's why I tell people all the time, y'all better, y'all need to start doing your own research and stop believing what the news say. And these yeah. people out there trying to create a narrative. You are so right. Yeah, yeah. Chicago, you know, Chicago is Chicago. And, and by the way, I meant to ask you, David, what part of um what part of the West Coast were you from? I know you said you've been here for a quarter century, but what part were you from in the West? Uh born in California in the LA area, went to school in the Seattle area, and then I came here. So I was pretty much up and down. Everything except Oregon. I've been up and down the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And so I yeah. came here. So so started out in California sometime in San Diego. Did a lot of like my my school age years were in Seattle and then came here. So okay, that yeah, that's dope. We, you know, I'm a New Yorker and and then lived in Cali down in the valley. We still got some property out in the in the valley, but down in the valley, then to Georgia. So bouncing around and seeing different things is great. But like back to Chicago, you know, it's really kind of like a um, you know, it, no matter where you go around this country widespread gang violence still if you look on a map a lot of it and, and please let me know if you agree with this or not a lot of it is still kind of concentrated so i yeah. can't i i wouldn't be able to take you anywhere in in america where we don't have like concentrated you know gang violence or poverty or whatever but typically like Star said how Chicago has that country feel. Chicago, to me, I, I, I'm not about to try to count how many times I've been to Chicago, but Chicago, to me, really runs along the vein, to be honest with you. It runs along the New Orleans vein. Yeah. It really does, because it's, yeah. it's so community-oriented. It's so, it's so friendly. I mean, you come to Chicago, who the hell else in the country during lunch hour, get a DJ out on a public square and step exactly. during lunch break. Exactly. You know, so yeah, Chicago is a phenomenal place, man. Yeah, and it, and it really is. And, it, and it, a lot of that's rooted in, you know, this being the kind of, from the great migration and this being a destination that everybody came up through from the Chicago Defender. You know, we have a lot of monuments here of the great migration as being an area. So a lot of that was was it was it was maintained here on the South side and the West side. So you mm -hmm. still have that kind of, it's, 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 it's a really unique mix of urban and, but Southern uh, cultural, you know, right. Yeah, uh, you know, to it. So, so it right. really is. And it's like, I mean, I, I came here and I'm just, you know, this lone, weird dude from the West Coast and people just took me <laughs> in. I mean, they're just like, come on, you know, we're gonna, you yeah. know, you, here's a plate, come on and hang out. I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm doing what I'm doing now because people just saw me talk to me and they were okay. I mean, they didn't know me from anything. <laughs> I'm just like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know where I was going, how to get anywhere. They were just like, come on, you can come with us. Mm -hmm. That shy town southern vibe, baby. Yeah, you gotta love it. You gotta respect it. Uh, music video director, film director, documentary filmmaker. I'm gonna test you out, David, because I am a sucker for films and and as well as music videos. And before I got into radio, I wanted to be a music video director. Uh, any music video directors and film directors that influenced your career? Any of them? If so, name me a few. Oh, I mean, like a lot of filmmakers, you know, you have the, the you know, the classics, the Kurosawas, you know, like that. Um, I'm a Wes Anderson fan. Um, those are the people that kind of touch me. I was Spike Lee. But honestly, it's never been one person for me. It's been a series of films. I've always thought it was better to look at what you like in a particular film as opposed to locking onto a filmmaker. So I've taken inspiration from indie films that, you know, 
I can't even remember who the director was. I can barely direct, but I remember the aesthetics of it. So to me, it's, you know, I have my favorites, like, like I mentioned like that, but um, it's more important to find the films you like and, and beyond that, find the elements of the films you like. What about this film do I like? Is it the pacing? Is it the tone? Is it, you know, it could be anything from color palette, you know, what is it about it you like and really lock onto it that and that's to me informs you then just like I, you know i like i like this director or something like that because um because that 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 really kind of broadens your your, your spectrum to me yeah. I love yeah. That. yeah yeah um i always look at uh film and, and music videos as one um as stories stories to be told to people to um, deliver a message, to convey a message to people about whether it's self-awareness, social awareness, or anything dealing with political or what have you. Was there ever like one lane that you wanted to stay in as a director, especially when it comes to film? Yeah, I kind of settled in on um, documentaries and that's what I'm doing now. It's pretty much, I'm pretty much like 99.9% .9 documentaries now. And I think that stemmed from, before I started getting into documentary for many, many years in Chicago, I was a, I was a, I was a videographer and I didn't really do like weddings. I did mostly things in the arts. So musicians, visual artists, poets, theater, things of that nature, people who needed to have like an online presence and EPKs and stuff like that. And there's so many communities in Chicago, it's it's almost overwhelming. You know, there's just there's so many people doing different things. And being a videographer, I got to see all of them. You know, depending on who my client was. You know, I'm I'm you know I'm at a hip hop show one day, I'm at a house music show the next day. You know, I'm at a poetry set the next day. Then I'm at a Ooh. play. So after a while, I saw so many of these narratives. And like I said, not being from you know Chicago, I got to see just all these incredible stories that I knew were unique to Chicago, and that's what inspired me to kind of transition into documentary because I felt like these need to be documented and they need to be documented because by the people who are making the history because that's I think that's wow. one of the problems is wow. that you know when you control when you control your narrative you control kind of you know the power of your community and a lot of times what happens is, is that we sometimes we might take something for granted and then somebody else comes in and creates a narrative about you and about, just like you're saying about how people feel about Chicago, that's because a lot of times people have come in and created a narrative. Mm -hmm. And what makes it difficult is after that narrative, no matter how inaccurate it may be, it's hard to correct it. Mm. It's, hard, it's hard to change it. So what I try to do is for things that I see that I feel like are important and historical, is creating that kind of historical and cultural timestamp to say these people were here, they were doing this at this time, and these are what these are the stories they told, you know, before somebody. Not to say that th that would be the only time the story is told, because it needs to be told over and over. But to say this is what they were, this is who they were, this is what they were doing. This is this is their own words, you know, you know. I it, it's like I said, I it, people still. And I remember when I got here, when I found out, a lot of people are shocked when they find out, yeah, Soul Train started in Chicago. It was a local Chicago. show yeah. in, 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 in Soul Train or in mm -hmm. Chicago, you know, and they can, you know, you get the, you get the older people, they can tell you exactly where it was. They can tell you all the stories about, you know, mm -hmm. same thing with, even though they're called the Harlem Globetrotters, that was, that was here, you know, and, and so it was, you know, um, I think that's important to time step so, you know, you can, because I feel like your narrative is also your social currency. You know, it, right. it's, 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 a, it's a valuable commodity for a community to have mm -hmm. your stories and have, um, yeah, like I said, have that time stamped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. David Weber, David Weathers be on the Deep Break Morning Show. I got to read this brother's accolades because when David puts the work in, he has put the work in uh, your your projects included documentaries such as the debauchery ball is different in Chicago the color of art uh, even your work has been featured on the Africa channel that's one of my favorite channels by the way uh, WTTW uh, your material has even been featured in the Pan African Film Festival 
Wow. San Diego Black Film Festival. I mean, even at the Roxbury International Film Festival, Chicago On Screen, Chicago Southside Film Festival. We're just going to keep going. We're just going to keep going and going with the applause here. Collective Voices Film Festival, Black Harvest Film Festival. Should I keep going, ladies and gentlemen? Keep going. Image, keep, going. Keep, going. Keep, going. Union, keep going. Image Union Film Festival and the Chicago Short Comedy Film Festival. David Weathersby, uh, he even has uh, been awarded a Black Excellence Award for Best Director and Outstanding Achievement in Film by the African American Arts Alliance of Chicago in 2018 and 2021, which was last year. Wow. We had the stone on. We had we had the stone on that real quick, David. <laughs> how, how does it feel? I mean, how does it feel to get those kind of accolades? Uh, it it feels it's surreal. Uh, especially for me because it took me a while to make that transition because I was just scared. There's, 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 I can't tell you how much footage and stuff I deleted because I just was too scared for the public to see it. When no. I first started doing film, I just, I just, I would literally leave the theater because I couldn't handle it. So I was just, cause I was just too nervous to get it. So to get these awards, especially from peers, people that I look up to. Cause I'm the kind of person when I got to Chicago, there was so much talent and there were so many people that was so amazing that I was just a fanboy. Like I was more impressed with, you know, the people that I saw in local places and I saw, then I heard stuff that was on the radio and I was just into, and to now be in a position where I've been had, I've had the honor and the pleasure to actually work with some of these people on projects. It's like I said, it's, it's surreal. And I'm just, I'm just honored that anybody would take the time. Anytime somebody takes you and honors you like that, it's just, it's, it's, it's special. Yeah. Uh, David, David, I'd like to ask you a question. And, and if I missed this somehow uh, before the show started, I apologize. But when, when it comes to your um, quote unquote, are you formally trained in your craft or is it something that you picked up, became ded dedicated to? and you develop the expertise and love for it. And no matter what the answer is, what do you recommend from people coming from like both sides, whether you're formally trained or whether you just happen to pick up an iPhone one day and decided to shoot a documentary? What, what would be your recommendation and where, where are your roots at? I have a weird story of how I got started. I, when I was coming out of high school, I, I wasn't, I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go into film, but I, I knew at the, at immediately I didn't have to have, you know, loans, whatever. I did not have the money to go to college at the time. It was just kind of out of the question. Mm. So I just kind of bumped around and I just kind of had it in back of my mind. I wanted to do it. And so, you know, finally, you know, got out, got out to this area and there's a art school out here that's, that's downtown. So what I did is um, I started just kind of going on the campus and just like, you know, talking to people and kind of listening to him and finding out what books they were reading, what their curriculum was. And then I went home and bought those books and created the curriculum on my own. And so I was like studying on my own. And then, you know, this was this, this how long ago it was like they had a listserv. And I was walking through the school and this woman was just like, oh, make sure you sign up for the listserv because she thought I was a student. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'll just, I'll just, you said so. So I signed up and they yeah, gave me yeah. all the stuff they were doing. And mm -hmm. from that point, I started at Apprentice. I started at the very low level, which was just PA, which is basically from uh -huh. anything from moving cables to uh -huh. mm -hmm. every project, every film project I went up, I got, I was able to get promoted. Like next when I was a script supervisor, then assistant, you know, an AD assistant director. And then I got to the point where, you know, I was, I felt like I was ready to strike. I, I learned enough to do that. Um, one thing I, I, the other thing I would do is I would get on the set and you hear phrases that you don't understand. So for a long time, I would keep a little notepad in my pocket and a little pencil. And every time I said something, somebody would say something, I didn't know what that meant. I would just write that word down you know, my little list. And then I would go home and research it and say, and then next, okay, I know mm. what that means. And the day when I didn't need my notepad was the day I felt confident, confident enough to strike out on my own. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. and that's how it went for me when, when I didn't have, when I didn't feel like when the, no one had said anything that was foreign to me and I didn't, that I didn't understand. That's when I knew I was ready. So, yeah, so, so when, when you're, 
when you're talking to people that are coming up under you, and 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 I love both angles. I love people that 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 quote unquote get formally trained for things. I, I guess because I'm a from the mud kind of guy myself. I I I respect people that did it because you know a lot of times um, educated people don't have the desire, so the education mm -hmm. kind of doesn't matter. And then people with the desire sometimes don't have the education because they have the mm -hmm. they have the desire to be great, but they're too lazy to learn and, and write those write those phrases down on pads and go home and research them. So what kind of balance would you bring to like anybody coming up that's looking at you and go, well, you know, I went to school for a thing. I, I got it, but I can't can't seem to get my foot in or somebody that goes, I feel like I know stuff, but I don't have the they closing doors in my face because I don't have what is formally, you know, required for me to get my foot in the door. Is there a balance there? Yeah, you should definitely know having the technical information, like I said, knowing knowing what you know what what everything means, why, even if you plan on Blake breaking the rules, know the rules so you know why it's there before before you break it. But the one thing I would tell people is you will be judged on what you produce, not what you present. So okay. a lot of times people feel like, you know, I write a script or something and so and they, they kind of stagnate themselves because they're waiting for this kind of flow of money or whatever that's going to back their part. And from my experience, you're judged on what you have produced yeah, under the circumstances. And so, and so the, that's what, you know, experience is, is invaluable. So I would tell people, you know, if you, everything, every project you do is, is a business card. Everything that you put your name on is, is representative. So I know it's it's tough it's tough resources wise and everything, but find out what you can do within the resources and do it to the best of your ability. Put your mm -hmm. all into it. Like I said, I don't care if you have your cell phone or everything. You make sure you make sure you frame it right. You light it right. You do everything, and you do everything within your frame, and then you stand behind what you what you've done, and let and let that work be um, what what attracts people. That's that that's what happened to me i just made stuff and because i'll tell you what i am not i am so far from a promotion and marketing guy i would do stuff and i just you know go home and then <laughs> i i'm not i'm not a good self-promoter <laughs> anyway and right, so but right. you know but um you but if you're if you're concentrate do your best know your craft your work will be your promoter Wow. You know, you're, 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 that's, you're, that's, that's indeed. I agree with that. I got a question for you, David. Um, with the new direction that we're in right now, when it comes to content creating, uh, everything is digital now. I was having a conversation with a couple of colleagues in radio broadcasting, and nowadays you don't hear much about NBC and CBS and ABC. Nowadays you hear about their digital platforms, their streaming platforms, like your Peacock, like Peacock is the NBC, uh, ABC, Disney Plus. You hear more about those streaming platforms, even Paramount Plus uh, to CBS. You hear more about Paramount Plus. Uh, what was the other one named? Disney Plus, Peacock. You hear more about those streaming platforms than you do with the traditional uh, television networks that's been around for so many years. And now there's dozens and dozens of platforms, especially for Black content creators to get this stuff out there. Once upon a time, it was hard for Black content creators to even get this stuff on the major networks. Yeah. Now you got so many options these days. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's great. I think I think it's it's a kind of a natural progression, you know, from the beginning of film, you know, the way we view films and way films are set up has changed over the years and it will continue to change. And it's usually driven on society and how people, you know, receive content, like what's around their lives. And now, you know, when people wanted when it was much more social, they were, you know, it's everything was in the theater and then television, then people started they had to, they had to make that change of some things are going to be theater, some things are going to be at home and everything. And I think now with the digital media and everybody, it's it, it's it's forcing people with, you know, people on the go and having the options that it's it's making them change their content. People want to 
And people also want to have the option. They want to be able to say, I want to watch this when I want to watch it yeah. and how I want to watch and everything. And so I really do think that it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a pattern that I've seen since that's been going on since the beginning of film and, and even performance art, you know, we kind of, the, it follows how the community wants to consume or is consuming uh, content. And so this is just the kind of the next step of it. And usually each step for the most part, not, not always, it, it, it usually opens a door for more options. You know, because with with a new platform, that means new formats and new things. And so it makes it easier and technology um, kind of uh, makes it makes it um, makes it easier, you know, that which can be kind of a double edged sword sometimes because, you know, it helps people make create new content. But it also, you know, sometimes cuts corners, you know, for lack of for a better, you know, um, phrase. Um, but yeah, I think that's just natural. I think it's the same reason why, you know, went from cassette to CD, you know, the same thing you see in music and everything else. It's just society changes, our, our needs of consumption change. And then so the way, so the methods of production change. And so it's, you know, and it's, I don't see it stopping anytime, anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to ask a question in reference to that, because uh, content is very important and even in my learning about like the importance of social media and just information in general and also uh, images matter. <laughs> People want to see the story as well as well, well as hear the story. I notice on social media now that you know um, there's a lot of content out there However, sometimes when I talk to people, you made a statement about just getting out there even with no budget, like no money. You kind of, you didn't touch too deep on it, but I definitely want you to elaborate on that. And, you know, kind of like, I guess, open that door for people who right now feel like they don't have the funds to do like this great documentary and stuff like that. Uh, that they can start now. They can start with no money, right? Right. Well, I mean, now I will say, of all the art forms, film is by far the most expensive. I mean, there, there are certain yeah. things that you have to buy. Uh, yeah, but I can there imagine. Are, yeah, yeah, there are ways yeah. around, especially now that the technology has come so far, and that's where you know your creativity. I remember um, when it's, one time I was on a set and. Everybody above the line that was working was, you know, they were, they were college, you know, just graduate from film school and everything. Mm. And uh, we were both, you know, guerrilla people, you know, we had come up from, you know, from just, you know, making stuff as, as we could. And it was so funny as like a, a light blue and they're very expensive. They're very particular, especially like film light, especially back then. Yeah. And they were willing yeah. to just shut down the day for it. And me and my friend, we just kind of looked at each other like, Where's the nearest Lowe's? We'll be right back. Right. <laughs> we had because we because we had done it before. We had had we had figured out. Now I'm not saying that you know you could go to Lowe's and get something that's just like a you know a, a high end light kit, but we were able to save the production um, because uh, we had had that experience. And I think even if you know you're not in that situation, you're not gorilla. You're you're going with higher end equipment. It's good to have those moments because you know, you know how to adjust. And if you know how to adjust, trust me, I don't care. No production is going to go as smoothly. What, what makes it is how well do you adjust to the moment? Mm -hmm. How well, how well can you, you know, everybody goes in with a plan from every film to every <laughs> coach in every sport comes in with a plan to, to win. It's how you re, how you, um adjust when that plan goes awry i think that really does kind of make or break people so yeah you just kind of have to find and what you have to do is you have to you have to make sure recognize what story you want to tell and do you have the resources to tell that story and sometimes you have to make a hard decision and just realize and say 
listen, I don't have the resources to tell that story right now, but I can tell this story. And so if you can find that balance, you can do stuff. I mean, granted, like I said, it's expensive. There's a hierarchy. You're not going to be able to do like green screen, you know, sci-fi stuff like that, but you can still tell a compelling story. It's, it still comes down to a story and, 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 and execution. So that's kind of um, what I would tell people to focus in on and then find the resource, you know, that, that, that fits around that. And then I have okay. one question uh, just to add on to that. So looking from the other side, so if it was someone who wanted to, I, I guess, because you're around people who probably have fantastic stories um, that you definitely want to get on film. Uh, for the person that wants to have their story told, a documentary about them told, how do you go about doing that? How does that process work? How does that look? First of all, the, the number one thing before you go into documentary is recognize what is your connection to the community or subject better. You know, as like people say, like, how do I find a concept? And I tell them, look around. What, what, what is, what's in your life? What, what people are around you? Like for me, these are people, these are stories, almost every documentary I've done were people that I knew that just were in my orbit and in my world. And they had a fascinating story. And I tell people, check, you know, check your own orbit first, because that, that's where you have your agency. That's where you have your connection. That's where you can kind of talk to people and comfort. It's like, it's totally different if you're just coming into some other group, you know, trying to tell somebody, but really identifying, you know, what groups around me, what connection do I have to it? Why am I telling this story? Hmm. And to and to make sure because you want to make sure that you are allowing people to talk. You're not telling, you're not projecting your concept of what you think the story should be. You have to be able to distance yourself and let the person tell their story. Hmm. So the first thing, you know, before anything else um, is what is your connection? Do you have a legitimate connection? If you don't, are you going to create that? Are you going to take the time to create it? Are you going to humble yourself to allow the other person to tell you their story and not be concerned about, well, I well, this story I think has more drama, so I'm gonna try to manufacture drama for that. No, you gotta kind of, you know, accept it for who for who it is and tell that story. Mm. Yeah, that's that's super. That's super dope. Sean Garvey, this is your fault. You had two of the most bomb guests of all time in history. Yeah. And so we <laughs> we just trying to we're trying to get the information while we're here. But I, you know, David, I think one thing that you're saying, and in, in, in short, once again, I know we I know we got to bounce out, but the thing is, I think that that it, the example of what you just laid out, you know, I see it every day. I'm a I'm a foodie. I'm a severe foodie. I love food, which is why I work out so much because I love to eat all the time. And so, but I'm watching people that have developed some sustainable incomes where it's steady, in, like they know it's coming based off hits and, and, you know, social media participation. But I watch people just pick up iPhones. And when you talk about, to paraphrase you, when you talk about What's around you? What are your resources? What's what is around you that you can make impact with? You when you look on the internet, people are making livings off of just doing food reviews and going mm -hmm. in, you know, like talking to mom and pop shops and things like that. And this is something that I don't think we ever thought maybe 10 or even 20 years ago. I don't yeah. think we thought that would have made sense to anyone. And now it has become like a major online commodity to seek out what's in your bubble and, and expose that and, and make a living off of that. Yeah. 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 There's people I know. They they have a leg just talking about comics, comic books. Guys, I know to just do history, to just do video games. You know, mm -hmm. it's just and you you're and you're right. They found what was in and what comes along with that is usually a passion. Sure. You know, I tell people, it's like, you know, when you're trying to figure out where is it, what, what's the one thing that you're willing to stay up late to do? 
What's the one thing that you like to do that you will get up out of bed at three o'clock in the morning because you have an idea for? You right. know, that one thing that 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 doesn't it doesn't there's no effort to it. It's the thing you want to do. It's the thing when you're at work that you would want yet you want to do while you're at a job. Mm. And if you focus in you that might, you know, might not be, but if you can focus on whatever that thing is, that's usually telling you what direction to go. Now, mm. finding monetizing that, that's a whole nother. I know that there's the challenges around that. But yeah, that's what I kind of tell people is what whatever you're willing to stay up late for and get up early for and get out of bed for and it doesn't seem like an effort it's something that you want to do that's that's your direction that's 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 at least giving you putting you on that path yeah yeah Yeah. i want to circle back to something that you said about uh when it comes to content creators because i am too am a content creator and i'm currently working on a scripted podcast series called unemployment check you may have heard me talk about it or mention about it on social media a few times it's actually in the production development stages as we're speaking and i totally 100 percent agree with what you stated earlier i come across people who have great ideas including me because i'm also talking to myself as well but we have all these great ideas. We have all these great story ideas and stuff. But if we don't have the finances or the resources to back it up with, it can be a bit challenging and a bit like an obstacle course, if you will. But, you know, if you have a great story and you want to share it with the world, I know there's other ways to get around doing that without having to um, pay. Because like you stated earlier, film is the most expensive thing that you could ever 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 make and so the idea that me and my team had was just to do it as a podcast first and let it build from there to where it can turn into a television series a made for tv series or a mini series or even to a film would that be something you would suggest to beginners and and people that are just starting out for the first time with you know especially with podcasts being popular these days would that be something you would suggest to beginners as they're starting out into this endeavor absolutely and 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 yeah find the content that you're comfortable with that you're passionate with and you have the resource for and also like i was like like check your circle you know of what because usually if you're in the arts usually you have something that you that you do but you're usually around people who have something else and they're like for example when I first started doing Dr. Mirrors and I'll ask people can I interview you or like I would like shoot an event you know we had this whole barter system where it's like it's like yeah shoot my event but can I get can you give me a snippet of this song that I need to put on my social media or I need my music video so we would trade stuff like I would have a friend who was a musician he was like of like, yeah, if I get that and he would, okay, here's some songs I've did, but I have my soundtrack. You know, friends who were photographers who, I got some lights, here you go. You know, and then, and then you know, here's, here's a, and I'll take a photo and it ends up being the poster. So it ended up being this just, you know, incredible, you know, arts barter system <laughs> we had with people that, because, because, you know, if you're in that circle, you know, you have, you're usually around some talented people. So, like I said, going back to what I was saying is, is, is check your circle and, and, and um, you know, you, you don't, like I never try to go in and try to get people to do some free. It's like, what what can you offer somebody and what can they offer you just as a friend? Like, you're like I have this skill in this. You need an EPK? I'll do your EPK. Thanks. Thanks. Here, I'm a musician. You need so, you need soundtrack. Here's these songs. You can mm. use them in your, in your project. And right. so you find that I, you know, I kind of, and kind of despise words synergy, but yeah, th- that kind of stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm, just bur- I'm, bur- I'm burned out on the word synergy, so I apologize for not saying it. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. that's basically what mm. Yeah, David Weathers be on the Beat Break Morning Show providing us with some game, free game on the film, television, and documentary industry, man. Now, and I'm learning a lot as we go along because. Uh, tapping into this world of filmmaking and television and film and stuff it's still a new world to me even though I went to television and film school 
for mm-hmm. something else. It's still a new world to me, especially with the new advanced technology that we have now nowadays. And you got even film directors and even video directors, David, shooting film off of mm-hmm. iPhones. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's because everybody's doing it? I mean, there's no stopping in people taking advantage of the new technology that we have in front of us. But uh, is it still beneficial, especially now in monetized to times to still use the equipment that uh, many filmmakers and, and, and people in the industry that has been around for you know a long time or whatever, do you think using that type of equipment, uh, the, I would say, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't want to use the word old, but I don't want to use the word vintage either. <laughs> but I'm going to just go ahead and say it. The, the vintage the equipment. Way, the traditional way of doing the things. The traditional. That, there you go. The traditional way. Do, do you think the traditional way is still more beneficial to get content out there? Is there still a need for, like Star said, the traditional way of capturing and, and filming content? Uh, it's a uh... It's, it's both things and it can be kind of a double-edged sword. It's new content, new technology is always great because it opens doors for people who normally couldn't do stuff. However, you always have to have a basis in the, in the would you say traditional? Because it's like history. It can teach you. It can teach you how to, how to do things. Like for example, a lot of times people, because the camera's, they feel like because the camera handles so much, they don't have to learn proper lighting technique. No, you still need to. You need to light. You need to learn the lighting technique that they were using years ago because that was that was based in a time where it was very unforgiving. It was very, you know, you had to have everything right. Same thing with audio. You had to have everything right. So you still so learning those techniques makes you better when you when you get to the point where you're relying on the technology to cover mistakes and do stuff like there's always a joke in film where like fix it in post which you should never do because you usually can't fix anything in post that's when people get frustrated so you have to have a knowledge of the traditional of why they're there because a lot of those were created at a time you know when there was a much smaller margin of error and if you could master those techniques it's almost like practicing in sports. If you can get through a very hard practice for hours, you get, a game seems easy, you know. Mm. And it's the same principle. If you can, if you can master these older techniques, these, these some of these principles. Now, granted, things change, you know, because everything's changed, and sometimes they're just obsolete. So you have to be able to, to, to tell the difference of that. But you still have to realize you still have to put in the work. You still have to do know know your craft be accurate with things. Um, even if you can't get to the point where you feel like I'm gonna let this camera do everything for me because you will find out really fast in post-production, it can't do everything. And this then, is, so, this is and so, yeah. and facts. also you will lose, you know, in that kind of creation of lighting and everything, you find your kind of your voice. That's how you know you. That's how people find their their technique and what they like and their their signature. You see, like some directors, and they have a kind of a signature and a style. And you're like, how did they come to that? Well, they got that through, you know, tr- trying stuff out, trying different cameras, trying lighting, and figure out what they liked through those pr- process and and figuring out this is what I want to do. And then they started once they got comfortable with it. Then you can experiment. Next, thing you know, you've created your own kind of technique. But that all stems from kind of knowing where it is. You have to you have to keep one foot in knowing it and having one foot that's willing to branch out and break rules if necessary. But you got like I said, you got to know the rules before you can break them. So, right. That, that right. It's, it's so right. it's so dope. You said that um the uh because I know quite a few uh, video producers and and directors and things like that. But they um. You know, the notorious in, in the film industry, I don't know if it's still notorious. I know at one time, uh, Red Digital Cinema, the Red Camera, mm-hmm. you know, it was like the, 
You know, that was, I don't know if it was, David, you know better than me, but I don't know if that was Holy Grail, but it was like that red camera was a big deal. And I don't know the price point, but I know that I've seen reds that were like 20 grand, 14 mm -hmm. grand, six grand. And nowadays, when you think about a studio, like a full blown studio, a, a recording studio is literally a MacBook, a little MIDI board, a, a Pro Tools, and a little bit, but no matter what you have, I'm watching a guy that's breaking into the business and he has a, he literally has an iPhone 13. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to a friend of mine, Tony Green, shout out Tony. And Tony is a red guy. And they're talking and he's like, I won't be able to buy the red because I record music too. I don't have that kind of budget. He's like, well, here's the difference between me and you. But here's where we're, here's where we're very much alike. But here's where we're different. I have what they say is a higher technology or industry guideline. But the one thing that I can't get past, you and I got to learn the same thing. And what is that? Whether it's your phone or whether it's this renowned, notorious red digital. What's the thing? He was like, I'm not quite sure. He says, what you know about lighting? Mm -hmm. What you yeah. know about framing? Like, what do you know? Because on your iPhone 13, you can create a masterpiece. And on my red, if you understand lighting and all that stuff on your i13, you may be able to create a masterpiece. And on my red, if I don't, I can create a disaster. Yeah. No, but we have more in common than you think. Absolutely. I always thought it was surreal. You know, granted, like I said, red is, you know, I don't want it, it will give you a look that's just amazing. But yeah. I thought it was surreal. I was in a film festival mm -hmm. uh, one time and they were going through and they were showing, I was sitting at the theater and, you know, most of I'd done with like DSLR cameras and I knew yeah. people, I, I'd seen a production. I know they had done stuff on red and mm -hmm. I just thought to myself, I said, it was kind of weird. I'm like, but we're all here. We all here. We're yeah. here in the same festival. Mm -hmm. We're all here in the same spot, you know, you know, that this 20, th there, there are things up on the screen that were shot with a $20,000 camera and uh, less than a thousand, you know, camera, you know. And so, and it really is, like you said, it's lighting and it's content. If you do a great story or a compelling story on an iPhone 13, it's opposed to doing something that's, you know, not as interesting on a red, you know, no one's, you know, I'm just, you know, people want, they want, that it comes down to it. You know, it's like, you know, aesthetics are important. They can, they can make or break. They can take away from your story. If you're, you're technically not sound, it's, you know, distracting. But at the end of the day, it's what you do with the equipment that oh, really right. kind of awesome. says it all. Yeah, yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, David, before we let you go, we only got a few minutes left in this hour on the Beat Break Morning Show. David Weathersby on the morning show with us. Uh, you have a project you're working on. Uh, expound on that. We talked a little bit about that offline. Um, but I'm, I'm big shout out to Riddell Drakeford, also from Chicago, a Chi Town native. He brought some video clips to my attention. He actually DM'd me in my Instagram and he was just like yo you gotta you gotta interview this brother because look what he's doing for the city of Chicago look at what he's putting out there and stuff and I took a look at it I was like oh this is very impressive so expound on the project that you got going on right now uh yeah I, the project I got going on and whatever it's called um it's different in Chicago and what it does is a lot of people know if you if you if you know about house music, Chicago, home of house and just house music. And, and Chicago right. also has a really strong hip hop scene. And when I got here, I noticed that just the different cultures, because when I was coming up, you know, most places, a lot of times hip hop is, is, is a dominant. But in Chicago, you know, the biggest film, the biggest music festival is probably Chosen Few, which is 40,000. That's a house thing. You know, mm -hmm. we have, you know like you were saying earlier about the plaza, there's a plaza here 
Daily Plaza, one of the biggest plazas in the city. People mm-hmm. come out for just one hour, just lunch. for some house music for, mm-hmm. you know, just for one hour for a lunch break thing. And I mm-hmm. just thought that was fascinating because it was beyond just their fans of the music. There was a culture, there was a history behind it. You know, how it branched out, how, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it represented like communities, like uh, LGBT communities when it was, when it was, when it was, you know, dangerous for them to be out you know be out in public and just the history kind of and how in chicago hip-hop had to come in and introduce itself as opposed to everywhere else so i just thought the showing the contrast of those two cultures and show how it's kind of symbolic of different cultures within the black community Right. You know, it was kind of a metaphor for our art, you know, different communities and how sometimes we, you know, they, they might be conflicts, but sometimes they complement it. Um, the, one of the guy, one of one, one of the guys I've, I've been so blessed to work with, Kahari B. You know, I did the I did the debauchery of all was about his event, um, everything. I think he had mm. the best quote about house and hip hop. He said, funk and disco had two babies. One went to New York, one went to Chicago. <laughs> and, um, and it's just basically showing like, you know, how they're both roughly the same age and the two different paths they came up with, but both those paths represent uh, community and cultural and things that are, that, that came straight out of uh, black, black music tradition and black culture and black history. And so right. that's a documentary I'm working on as right now. Um, I'm I'm honored to say that we have a screening. I'm flying out tomorrow because we're going. We have a screening in New York at the Apollo for the documentary. And, nice. Uh, nice. So, and so doing that, and so yeah, so that's the project I'm working on now. We're about to do the director's cut of the Debauchery Ball, um, which was another incredible, fun story. You know, it's a. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's an annual party that combines house music, BDSM, kink, and Afrofuturism all in one big, just wild party every year that everybody I'm goes going, to. I'm going to need to hear that, David. I might have yeah. to attend. Yeah, it's the Bajra Ball is a, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it is. And I don't it need is to a, come out, and I'm, I'm going to have to attend that. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a beautiful community of just like freedom. I've been. I was so honored to be able to do the documentary, and we are still going strong. We're we're about to do the the director's cut with you know, with music. We got just a lot of stuff coming out. But yeah, it's just this this mix of just um, of expression and freedom, you know, sexual freedom, but also community and art and safety and consent mm. and like kind of helping people kind of, you know, express themselves, you know, as sexual, but in a consent and healthy way. And, you right. know, and all with all to house music. And so, so uh, yeah, those are the two projects I work on. And it's just been, it's just been an absolute pleasure and an honor that everyone that I've been able to interview and work with. And it's just, you know, it's just been, it's been surreal and I'm just incredibly thankful. But when you have the screening down here in Atlanta, please let me know or have your people let me know. Or I actually, I might just have to hit over there and uh, find out when that screening in Atlanta is going to be. Because I want to see this. I want to see it's different in Chicago. I don't want to just see the trailer and the promo, but I want to see the entire film. And, and I like how you have the title saying it's different in Chicago. Uh, because people still need to be reminded that propaganda in the media uh, can sometimes misinform others mm-hmm. that uh, Chicago is not what people think it is. Um, yeah. You know, just Chicago is a, di- is, is a very big culture shock. It is a very different experience out there. I know plenty of people in Chicago, shout out to my people checking in at Beat Break Radio from Chicago, but uh, it, it gives people that different outlook on Chicago. And, and that's why I mentioned the movie, uh, not the movie, I'm sorry, the TV show, The Shy, because mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm really proud that Lena and all the other people behind that show give people, give viewers and audiences a different outlook on what Shy really is. 
Yeah. Uh, every state has a pro and con. Every state has its good and its bad. But you really don't know Chicago until you go out there and visit. It's one thing right. to hear about it on the radio and to hear about it on TV, especially with the propaganda and things of that sort. But it's a different thing when it comes down to going out there and experiencing mm -hmm. like, the, the culture and the environment and out there. So, and like, you know, and, yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, that, that's, what, that, that's one of the things that, that drove me to want to do documentaries because I was so tired of the narrative. I would, mm -hmm. I would go out and see these, you know, incredibly talented people, um, incredibly, you know, you know, just warm, fun people, all these, you know, very unique, and then find out some of the stuff that, you know, other places are taking credit for started in Chicago, and then you turn on the news, and there's only one narrative they want to hear, and, you know, will actually kind of reject anything positive, and I was like, you know, this needs to be time stamped, because if, if something's not done, this will sink into, this will be kind of etched in stone. And it so, would be, yeah. so I, you know, I, whatever little bit I could do. And that was kind of my driving force is just to counter, you know, I'm not, never be naive or anything, but um, people deserve <laughs> to have, to hear every side of the story. And that's the beauty. Beauty is just as real as, 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 you know, positivity is just as real as negativity. And it's yeah. not fair, and it's not fair to just, lean on the negativity especially when it's not unique to to just in chicago people need to have both stories and then you make your judgment about it and that's the one thing i said it's like you know it's not it's not rose colored glasses it's just that the the narrative needs to be balanced and really, it's just like yeah. it's just like in, it's just like in atlanta it's just like in atlanta uh you know people see atlanta as a black wakanda uh, mm -hmm. black hollywood and then you have those that see Atlanta as a city of strip clubs and gay people and this and the third, but we are so much more in Atlanta. So it's the same thing with Chicago and everywhere else. Uh, Mr. Moody, did you have something to say? No, I just I just wanted to say that, that seriously, um, Sean, you pretty much, you, you started the runway for what I was gonna say anyway. Listen, get on a plane and go to Chicago. Seriously, get on a plane or a car, however you get there, Go to L.A. L.A. is not a bunch of bloods and crips walking around the place. Just like wherever you go, it's like a blood or crip and everything is like menace to society. That's not what California is. Um, in Chicago, even as far as musically, I noticed that David said something really interesting that it, it, it could be, maybe I don't have them word for word, but it's like New York had two babies and they went to Chicago. Well, that... There's, there's some truth to that, but to bring it back though, hip hop, what is more influential than, than literature? Everything. Because I was about to go, Sean, I was about to do my show and say my word, but MFs don't really like reading anymore. So we know literature is not that powerful. So we know that, we know that film, we know that people love film, but the one thing that from now to the beginning of time, from tribal Egypt to tribal Africa, the most influential source in the world will always be music. It won't ever change. It's not ever mm -hmm. gonna be anything different than that. And when you think about Chicago, hip hop in itself, which is probably the biggest art form, they say it's country. Country is black music, so whatever. But hip hop mm -hmm. is a powerful influence. And what I try to tell people about Chicago and places like that, you guys remember something. When you listen to hip hop, if, 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 if New York launched babies, then Chicago made kings and they sent them back to New York because hip hop is comprised off of organic boom bap. Hip hop is comprised off of reggae culture. Hip hop is comprised off of the 1980s, the, the, the explosion of the house music scene in the 80s in Chicago. And mm -hmm. hip hop is comprised off of, off of jazz music that of course we all know that came out of New Orleans. Yeah. And so go to these places and see that everything is the same. By the way, the people that are giving you the, the propaganda, the people that are giving you the false narrative, here's what you need to understand. 
when you have a senator from Kentucky saying, what about Chicago? Perhaps we should talk about the methamphetamine infested child trafficking portion of Kentucky. There's yeah. just, you're, we won't ever be able to go anywhere where the sins are not equal. If you stop listening to what people say, go to Chicago, you won't get robbed. Go, well, go to Chicago and be smart. Go to New Orleans, go, you know, go to, hey, listen, go, go to New Orleans and be smart. Now, as a native New Yorker, you can skip, you might want to skip New York, but then go to LA and with that, because New York is a lot of times what exactly what the hell we're telling you that it is. So, because we, we are the melting pot. But David, I want to thank you so much for that, man, especially from you coming from the West Coast and loving where you came from, but embracing where you're at. You know, it needs to be known, Chicago's impact on, on, on the biggest, the biggest form of black music, which is hip hop, it is immeasurable. You know, Chicago did that boom, 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 four strikes per measure. Yeah. And then we start going boom, 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 four, eight strikes, nine strikes, 10 strikes. Chicago started the boom, ba doom, doom, the synth, the synth life. All of that orchestra kind of club stuff, it came out of Chicago and New York took it. I know ain't nobody on here old enough that they don't know Jungle Brothers, girl, loud house you. You in my house now. Doom, 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 doom. New York is a, we are very influenced by Chicago, New Orleans, California, and of course, New York, the influencer itself. People get on, get in the car, get on a plane, go to Chicago, be wise like you should be in Missouri or Kentucky or Indiana or Georgia. Be, be, be wise like you should be anywhere. And when you come back, you'll understand what false narrative is. But don't just learn about false narrative and come back and don't say nothing. Come mm -hmm. back and let everybody know what yeah. false narrative is. Because you'll that, find it. Yeah. That if, 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 if we could ask for anything, that, that would be it. It's just mm -hmm. to yeah, tell the truth and, 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 and tell people what you, what you see. Tell mm -hmm. the truth. Indeed. That, that, would, that, would be, that would be greatly tell appreciated. The truth. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but, well, David, we really appreciate you for coming on the Beat Break Morning Show. If anybody wanted to check out your content, your films, your documentaries, all that great stuff, where can they go to and how can they reach you for more information? Uh, well, the main one is, is, is the, my, my company page, which is cityvanguard.com, uh, C-I-T-Y-V-A-N-G-U-A-R-D. Dot com city vanguard uh debauchery ball has its own website the the, the with two e's the debauchery ball doc and then um we're working on a new project new ambrose which, which is called the district documentary which is an animated documentary that's that's we're, we're still working on now and so that 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 website's up too but Everything flows through cityvanguard.com. Come check it out. If you see, if you see, if you search anything from David Weathersby or City Vanguard or any of the social medias, it's me. I'm not. I'm. I'm not that creative with names. So just. Yeah, I just. I just, <laughs> I just have the same name on all social media. So just David. David Weathersby or City yeah. Vanguard. That's me. <laughs> that's them. That's them all day. All right. Well, David Weathersby, thank you so much for coming on the morning show with all this great information. Oh, thank you. Man. It was. But, it was an honor. You. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much. And it's been very helpful, man. And and I got to definitely uh, keep in contact with you uh, for some upcoming projects in the near future. In the Absolutely. near future. Because you, you, you spoke about circles earlier, and I think it's very important, too, that uh, we check our circles and check the people that we're around. Because we never know. You know, you, you never yeah. know. You always check you your circles. You have circle. an idea. I'll check your circle. There's plenty of circles here in Atlanta. Yeah, so yeah. many circles here in Atlanta. It's it's crazy, man. And um, I'm glad that shouts to Waddell Drake for it. I'm glad that he put me on to you, and uh, you just showed me the amazing work that you have done for the community and for people who are lovers of the art and the culture. So I really appreciate you. You will be hearing from me very soon, David. So right, really appreciate I am, it. I am so always much, a man. phone call or email away. You just contact me anytime. Absolutely. Hey, David, I'm going to need you to go find that shirt and send me that shirt, bro. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I'm I'm obsessed with it now. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be up tonight. I'm gonna find out because now it's all now it's stuck in my head. I got you on the hat, yeah. Find that shirt, bro. That's gonna be the I'm, next. I'm on doc- the lookout. I'm on the lookout. Yeah, the next documentary is David's shirt. I want that shirt. I got it. <laughs> What a pleasure, David. Thank, Thank you so, so much, David. So much. It was a pleasure. Thank Cheers. you. All right, be safe. Yeah, right. Man, Dave, you. Dave, good night. Good morning. David Weathersby, filmmaker, documentary filmmaker, music video director, producer, all uh, all great things. Dropping that free game on the Beat Break Morning Show, man. What other show, what other podcast can you get this free game from this great information? What Ooh, other God. podcast? This what other show? David, look, he was looking sexy on that profile pic, though. I, I, knew, I knew you was going to say something. <laughs> oh, oh light skin with braids, baby. Boom. He was giving Yo, me, he was giving me like a that. bit. You kept it professional, though, Ma. You kept it professional, Queen. You, you. I, could, I couldn't wait for him to get off so I could talk about them life skin for free. Oh, oh my you goodness. Talk, so you can this... talk that talk. Yeah. Lord, yeah, mercy. But yeah, he was, he was loving it. I mean, tonight was this morning and tonight because somewhere in the world. Anyways, <laughs> but it, it was good. I always think about that. Sean, remember when you used to come on the show every morning drinking a beer? Beer uh, or, or, or wine? Wine, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Moody is with the beer. I'm with the wine. Yeah, I was talking about you though, Sean. It was the wine. And not mm-hmm. only the wine, you were made you had uh special drinks made. Um, was it margaritas? I oh, uh first see, by the way, by the way, folks, ladies and gentlemen, uh uh not brought to you by Gloria Margarita. Not brought to you by, we're not endorsing, we're just showing you what I've been sipping on throughout the duration of the broadcast. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not endorsing. I'm just presenting. I said that's, right now, that's kind of that's kind of the same thing. So <laughs> well, and, and as far as nighttime, it's always nighttime somewhere. So well, it's it's nighttime. It gotta be nighttime. What is this? It's what's a, it's okay, so. It's, it's morning. It's the time. beat break. It's the beat break morning it's, show. Well, it's evening time in New Zealand. If it's the morning in America, it's evening time in New Zealand. So there we go. It's nighttime in New Zealand. Let's get. Let's move on. And by the way, <laughs> folks, if you, listen. If if you guys want to hear a host that fully indulges drinking fully on the job to no extent and still recording, uh, make sure when I make my 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 return that is that is the wow that is that is going to be the w-o-w make sure you tune in for me if you want to hear drunken hosts keep it together for a couple of hours y'all come check me out i got you promise i won't be there but i i have it together for you i mean nobody knows (laughs) (laughs) you can't make this up like I said, ladies and gentlemen, we're experimenting throughout the duration of the show. Now I figured something else out. We can go live on YouTube. I saw you. The way. <laughs> it nope. was cool. We can go I'm live sorry. on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So we're live on YouTube at Beat Break Radio. We're live on IG. And we're live on Zoom. <laughs> we lit. So it, yeah, mm-hmm. we we are. We, we, mm-hmm. We're definitely lit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for all my IG people out there, like I said, um, I think starting next week, because we're now in the third hour of the, well, technically we're in the fourth hour of the morning show, because mm-hmm. we got the Beat Break Morning News airing at the top of the hour now. So we got the Beat Break Morning News with Michelle dawes and a few other news correspondents. We're now going to air the Beat Break Morning News for one hour from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Shout out to Michelle dawes who's been holding it down with us for the past couple of years now with Real Chicks Rock. And she got her own podcast now, The Beat Break Morning News, in which you can check it out on uh, Spotify. Love also, it. I'm loving it. Oh. I love how we expanded. Oh. So, we got the, yeah, so we got The Beat Break Morning News uh, from 6 to 7, East instead of Time, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then from 7 to 10 is the four hour 
of the Beat Break Morning Show. So now we're in the fourth hour of the morning show and we're at the top of the hour. So stick around. We got more of the Beat Break Morning Show. We got to hit this top of the hour and uh, we will be right back with the trending report with Star Kells. And we're going to talk, like some... talk about some ice cream. Talk about some ice cream. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about some ice cream. I started, I started, I started you we all scream for ice cream. I scream for star. By the way, she was shaking that. I scream for star. I ain't gonna scream for no ice cream. That's chocolate. That's chocolate ice cream. That's chocolate ice cream. Y'all want to stay here? Or y'all, y'all want to go on IG? Which, which I want to do? Well, I don't really know what the hell I'm doing right now. So just tell me. What to do. <laughs> I mean, can we just stay here? I... Well, okay. Well, what's most effect- what would be most effective? I mean, if we want to interact with the listeners. So let's go, let's go to IG. Star, you want to stay here by yourself or you want to go to IG? What you want to do? I follow I, y'all. The men I ain't going to, no, I ain't going, I ain't going nowhere without the orange M and M, baby. The M and M got to go. Where we go, the M and M, I'm following the M and M. Uh-uh, I know how to let a man lead now. I I'm letting y'all lead. All right, well, let's go then. God damn it, start pack your bags. We'll be going over to IG. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going on IG on the first, fourth hour of the Beat Break Morning Show. So follow us there at Beat Break Radio on Instagram. And we got more of the Beat Break Morning Show. Uh, stay tuned for <laughs> the station ID and some commercials because, of course, we got to pay these bills. And we will be right back with more of the Beat Break Morning Show. Y'all keep it locked.